Yes, thank you for staying tuned to the program. And as we start off with our first leg of a conversation, of course, just a quick reminder, we're looking at that approval by the NCC for restriction of calls from GLOW to MTN due to um, indebtedness of GLOW to the tune of 6 billion naira to MTN of what we know as interconnect fees. We'll know more about, we'll find out more about what interconnect fees are this morning. But first of all, let's take a closer look at that statement by the Nigeria Communications Commission. And this is it. Uh, the Nigeria Communication Commission hereby notifies the public and subscribers of Globacom Limited that approval has been granted for the partial disconnection of Globacom from MTN Nigeria Communication PLC due to non-settlement of interconnect charges. Globacom was notified of the application made by MTN and was given opportunity to comment and state its case. The commission, having examined the application and circumstances surrounding the indebtedness, determined that Globacom does not have sufficient or justifiable reason for non-payment of the interconnect charges. All subscribers are therefore requested to take note that the commission has approved the partial disconnection of Globacom to MTN. Take note of the operative word, it's a partial disconnection uh, of Globacom to MTN in accordance with Section 100 of the Nigeria Communications Act 2003 and Paragraph 9 of the Guidelines on Procedure for Granting Approval to Disconnect Telecommunications Operations 2012. So again, it's a partial disconnection, meaning that Inbound calls to Globacom will still go through, but of course, Globacom will not be able to call MTN subscribers. So joining us to have further discussion on this is the National President, National Association of Telecom Operators of Nigeria, Mr. Adeolu Ogunbanjo. Ogunbanjo. Yes. Thank you very Good morning much. and thank you for joining Telecom us. Telecom subscribers. On of Telecom Nigeria. subscribers. Yes. Thank you for joining us on the morning brief. Pleasure. It's a pleasure. Um, I believe a good yeah. place to start would be interconnect fees. How critical are these fees to the success, the seamlessness of um, uh, services, you know, calls through the networks, not just Globalcom, MTN, but all the other networks now? Quite sincerely, uh, interconnect fees are uh, fees charged you know when an operator you know uses another i mean another mobile network operators um, um, network to get to another one so and they have this arrangement in between themselves but unfortunately um, a lot of things do happen many of them don't honor the payment of this inter interconnect fees even when they say, come, um, whatever that, you know, is what, what I have made, remove it from what you have made and then pay me the balance. They don't honor it. It's unfortunate. So it's a fee that is within, you know, the um, mobile network operators that they charge among themselves, which is also approved by the NCC, mm. by the way. So, um, but six billion naira is quite an amount. Is, is there a much. way that you know that amount can be uh, a, a more efficient way that that amount can be managed, the, the payment can be managed such that it doesn't accumulate? You see, the, the issue now is this has actually been deducted. I mean, it's been used. We have the subscribers have paid for this, and. I remember in the Anesindukwe days um, when an uh, engineer, Dr. Anesindukwe, was the um, EVC and the CEO of NCC. He, you know, he had a telecoms industry working group of which one Alaji Bashir Grandu was the chairman. I was a member. It has always been a problem. In fact, they were then owing Nitel, although that started, you know, with um, that had 500,000 lines at that time. So it has always been a situation where operators do do not honor this particular agreement, this interconnect phase. It's, it's an age long problem. And NCC had always come to say, look, you have to honor these agreements between yourselves. Please do. But they don't. 
So I'm curious to know or find out why don't they honor? Is it that because there are no punitive measures? What exactly is it? Why are they not honoring an agreement? Because you say it's an, maybe a perennial problem. So what could be responsible for someone to, or an organization to insist on not honoring a laid down agreement as approved by the regulator? Thank you. You see, the regulator is always trying to, you know, be cautious in the sense that he doesn't want to, you know, raise the big hammer all the time. And he wants them, he appeals to them and all that. And not, up, not until when, for instance, one operator now complains, you know, to the NCC, look, this is getting too much, maybe for a year, two, three, four, and uh, for what I can remember, it's been on. So this is a serious canker worm that is bedeviling the telecoms industry. So I read the statement, and one of the things you said, not sufficient, unjustifiable reason. What excuses, or what are the excuses that Globalcom, in your view or in your understanding, that they are giving for not being able to pay the six billion naira they are owing MTN? What are they saying that the NCC is saying we can't listen to what you're saying, so we have to implement Section 100 of our of our Act? Sincerely, I do not understand where Global, Global, uh, Globalcom is coming from. Glo, I mean. These calls have gone through from the, I mean, from one, um, uh, um, from the glo uh, global com, um, what do you call it, network to MTN. So, it has, and subscribers have paid. It's unfortunate that I don't know what reason Glo is, 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 is trying to give, you know, for not paying. So two issues, really. Uh, first, I know a lot of figures have been quoted, but the NCC statement is not specific about the amount. I know there's been certain figures put out there, but two things I'd like you to respond to. Uh, first is that an unofficial source uh, within the, uh, the organization has been quoted by some media outlets as saying that GLOW isn't owing MTN, and this is an unofficial source of media outlet uh, put it out. There's been nothing official yet, really, but you know, perhaps this was gleaned. And, and I wonder, the big question for a lot of people, particularly subscribers, is that, so what then becomes our fate? So imagine I'm a husband. My wife uses the other uh, <laughs> network. And you know, I just want to call my wife to check on our, your girlfriend or your boyfriend or you want to do business and all of that. We know how important communication is. So what becomes, what will be the fate of subscribers if this eventually sails through? I see we have just a few more days, eight days to go, I think, if going by that countdown, eight, nine days. So what, what is our fate? Because, hey, and I imagine you as well, because of course you also had that um, association. What is our fate? Um, honestly, this has been an ongoing thing, and the regulator, like you have rightly pointed out, have been trying to appeal to the, uh, the mobile network operators to please honor this, their financial agreements. But unfortunately, a lot of things do happen, and um, somehow this is not met. Now, coming back to what you have said, sir, um, it will affect subscribers. Again, it will also affect the, I mean, the, the mobile network operator, the, of, the, the offender, because don't for, I mean, that which is glow. Um, don't forget that there is what we call mobile number portability. People will now, if an ad cannot call, I can go and port my glow line to. I know that. Uh, well, don't forget the other options. There's WhatsApp. There's other means that people actually get to make calls. In fact, some people prefer to do it uh, with those apps than to do normal phone calls. Yes, sometimes you are forced because if, for instance, your data is misbehaving and signals are not that strong, you will definitely want to make calls. So um, it will affect low as well as, you know, I mean, it will also affect the subscribers. But this is very unnecessary. Only if 
they honor the agreements between them. So subscribers should please understand that, look, between now and another five, six, seven, ten days, or nine days or something that is left, I'm sure Glow will do the needful. Well, while we are hopeful that Globalcom will do the needful, um, this is not the first time, and I hope this is a valid question. This has happened in 2018 as well, when the uh, Communications Commission restricted calls from GLOW to MTN. And Globalcom is the indigenous um, telecoms operator in the country. Uh, why is it you know, always the one that is fingered in this? Um, the, there are other telecoms operators who are smaller in category and ranking you know, to this operator. I, I wonder if it's a valid question. Yes, it is. Um, like you did mention, is the, the, the and, and it's so painful that this is the wholly indigenized mobile network operator. And why is it that all the time it is always? I mean, this what from what I can see in the last uh, few years, this is the second time that this has been done, but. Before the, uh, um, the regulator, for instance, before the regulator can actually come in, they must have known that this is happening. So it's not just a situation where, I mean, uh, NCC or MTN is saying, sorry, they're not paying them, but this is real. So GLOW should also look inwards and start honoring these um, you know, agreements this payment agreement, so that their um, the, 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 their subscribers are not hurt, you know, are, are not affected. They should also try and see that th this is the only industry, for instance, that is a good example of privatization. All right. You know, unlike, for for instance, another problem is the the banks again that are not paying the mobile network operators. Perhaps, maybe the banks are owing GLOW. So perhaps, because the banks are, not, uh, are now owing GLOW, they are now not being able to, you know, pay the, I mean, the, 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 the MTN. Um, but, but you, you said earlier that, you know, these funds have already accrued to the operator from because, monies from, paid by subscribers, subscribers for the services. Yes. So why, where do the banks come in? What I'm saying is, the same issue about you know uh, all players not honoring their payments is that the banks are owing close to 200 billion they are owing the mobile network operators and they are still not paying so until the big stick is actually yeah. applied because I, by the ncc well, that's where i was coming from because as a subscriber it's a bit upsetting that the quote and unquote irresponsibility so, or the, maybe that's an extreme word. The inability of these um, organizations to comply with simple rules and regulation, I would not have to suffer for it. So, I can take any of them to court at the end of the day because if I'm a Glow subscriber or MTN subscriber, I don't want to peg it on Glow anyone now because you say it's a common practice within that space. So, I can actually, it can be a subject of litigation. So, my question is, what will NCC now do going forward, just besides appeals? Because if NCC wears the big stick and ensure this is done and complied with, with every other thing they are doing, at the end of the day, I don't think this will happen because you keep saying they're appealing to them, comply and comply. Appeal apparently is not working. So what is NCC thinking of doing if you, if you answer that question for us? Well, hopefully, Globalcom will not allow the um, the the the, um, the day. I think it's um, was it is it nineteenth or something. The moment that happens, then NCC may build will the big stick if they allow it to expire before payment because they will still pay anyway because they, they have to be in business and for the sake of their subscribers. They should understand that they are not the, the only one that, uh, you know, that must honor this interconnect uh, risk so, payment. So who bears the cost of losses 
If this is not resolved, and indeed as approved by the NCC, no one can call. I mean, you can only call. MT, I think you, MTN can call Global. Glow cannot call. Whatever losses is incurred on the other end, who bears it? Because as a subscriber, I've done my part. The regulator is appealing. The people in the, the players, I don't know how to describe their own game. The um, offending operator loses, subscriber loses now. Unfortunately, for GLOW, or for Globalcom, subscribers with GLOW can now, for instance, take GLOW to court. Having subscribed to their network, mm -hmm. they are depriving them of calls to any network of my choice, of, of their choice. So, mm -hmm. for God's sake, GLOW should understand that this is a situation they have to remedy. Right. We have to, you know, do that on time. Just as we wind down, let's just run through uh, what is going to happen if this sails through. You can't make a call to, uh, if you're MTN, you can make a call to GLOW, mm -hmm. am I correct? Yeah. If you're, you can, if you're, yes, you can make a call to GLOW. If you're GLOW, you can't make a call to MTN. Precisely. Can you send an SMS to MTN from GLOW? The partial disconnection is what I don't know, the coverage. Okay. You know. Can you use data to make... Um, uh, like all those VOIP or WhatsApp calls from GLO to MTN. That again will determine the extent to which the regulator would, you know, want the uh, this partial disconnection to be. So we don't know whether it will affect data from GLO to MTN, or is it just calls that the partial um, disconnection is what we don't know. We don't know yet. Has this ever been implemented? Oh, yes. It has. It has been. So what you hear when you make the call is the number you've dialed is not reachable or <laughs> I, I switched off? Or? I, 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 I don't know, but I know that it, it, it may not even go through mm. at, all. at all. Even though you have airtime on your phone? Apparently. Yes, and that is the, uh, the aspect where we are saying, look, if I have subscribed, I have their SIM, I may have to, you know, look at uh, taking GLOW to court. Or NCC. No, no, NCC, no, NCC has, you know, directed that this will be paid. So they have regulated. The NCC is not doing enough to make sure they pay. That's what we're arguing. NCC that, that's, is that's cautious. Well, shouldn't there be a better way to I, even pay? Let the money go that directly. Is, that rather money than just, someone holding the so money rather than just, pay, let my money go directly let money to go. MTN. Since I'm the one making the call to MTN, let it not mm. go let, to it, go, let it be deducted from source. MTN. Yeah, so that the, the, the subscribers so. are not inconvenienced unnecessarily in the future because it seems as if it's the subscribers that are suffering for the disputes between uh, the two mm. telecom operators. What I also don't know is whether the money goes to NCC or there is an arrangement between the mobile network operators to pay themselves. So I don't know that bit, but that should be a way they should be paying themselves mm. without... Um, us, I mean, subscribers know. Well, uh, you know, uh, amid this um, interconnect dispute, you know, there's also the more important concern about how much the NCC is also doing to protect the interests of subscribers, and that's talking about connectivity issues, data calls, mm. data. You know, but we don't have time, mm. you know, to expand <laughs> the conversation. We'd like to thank you very much, Mr. Adeolu Ogumbanjo. Is an Ogum? I don't know why I keep saying Ogumbanjo. You forgot the chief, Mr. Adeo. Chief Adeolu Gubanjo is the National President, National Association of Telecom Subscribers, Natcoms. Thank you so much, sir, for, you for coming on the morning. Well. And I love the look, I must say, by the way. Thank you um, very much. Uh, well, maybe you're the man who comes to, maybe you're the man who comes to when it comes to litigation because you represent the subscribers. So maybe it's, uh, we'll money's we'll about to them. Money is about to be made by Nigerians, so everybody <laughs> should sit up. <laughs> Thank All you right, so you our next question for you is, just how deep has inflation dug into your pocket and what's your coping mechanism? Stay with us. The Morning Brief will be right back.